When you study the work of one of the most brilliant people to live in recent memory, Nikola Tesla, and also start to look at the ancients and the wisdom and tools that they shared, you see many overlaps and certain things being repeated and emphasized time and time again. In Hermetic wisdom, which can be traced as far back as ancient Egypt, it is stated that nothing rests, everything moves, everything vibrates. You can see this stated in the Kabbalion under the principle of vibration if you want to learn about this even further. Tesla himself is quoted saying that if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Now, why would one of the most brilliant minds of the last century, along with all of these wise masters and teachers and so many others, emphasize this so much? And the crazy thing is, is we can see many different ancient cultures and civilizations pointing to these facts, even though these civilizations are seemingly unrelated or even on opposite ends of the planet. Egyptians, for example, believed that the universe was sung into creation through vibration. It is even theorized that the pyramids were constructed using some kind of sound vibration technology. And there are many other ancient cultures that believed sound, which is vibration, to be the genesis of all creation and to be within all creation. They believe that it is literally responsible for everything. Like mentioned earlier, nothing rests, everything moves, everything vibrates. Okay, that's great I hear you say, but why does this matter? Why does it matter to you? Because when you become aware that pretty much everything is energy, frequency, and vibration, you can start to use it as a tool in order to become the intentional and deliberate creator of your life. You begin to learn to put more of your emphasis on the inner world rather than the outer world and how to put emphasis on the inner world where all of these things originate and exist, energy, frequency, and vibration. Instead of doing what most people do, which is focus on the outer world, which is simply a byproduct of the inner world. So in this video, we are going to dive deeper into this so that you are equipped with a working understanding of how this works, the proper tools that will help you express that understanding in ways that allow you to be the powerful reality creator of your world. And I'll also even give you some further steps at the end for those of you who want to apply this as fast as possible while getting amazing results and if you want to get to that next level. So let's jump into it. So before we move into everything else, we need to first understand why energy, frequency, vibration is so crucial when it comes to creating our reality. Why should we even focus on this? Why not just go out into the physical world and focus on action, action, action without really paying attention to this so-called woo-woo or esoteric stuff? And this is really because of a lack of understanding of how the world actually works, how reality actually works. And when you understand how reality actually works and this clicks, you'll never again go out and take mindless action. You'll never again uh, really balk at the idea of doing the inner work or the things that need to be done in that realm. Because once you understand what is creating your reality, it would be just really counterproductive to just go out and take mindless action all the time. Now, the reason for this is we have to understand that the outer world follows the inner world. And you can look at all the science to back this up. This has been known for a very long time, actually, um, but just hasn't made it to the mainstream because, well, there are people who benefit for just pushing Newtonian physics and not really giving this model, which is much more in line with how things work. These are things, again, the ancient masters knew, ancient civilizations that were advanced, they knew these things. Nikola Tesla knew these things. And some of the more great minds throughout history were very aware that the outer world follows the inner world. Now, the inner world, what does that even mean? That means the world of energy, frequency, and vibration. That means the energy, uh, the world of emotion, which is energy in motion. And I'm going to be going over how you can tap into this world, how you can use this world to start shaping your external world. One thing that I tell clients, and I like to say on this channel as well, but I like to especially remind clients of this because it's so true, is that the outer world, the physical world, is simply your energetic history. And as we continue to go through this video, you're gonna see why that is, and as you watch other videos on here, and you get more familiar with this and you start using it, but the outer world is simply an energetic history, an inner world history. This is why you even have people like Einstein quoted as saying, there is no out there, 
out there. And he's really alluding to this fact that most of reality is not physical. It is simply a byproduct of the inner world. It is shaped by the inner world. And if you even look at the physical realm, what we call the physical world, you'll see that most of it is actually energy and empty space that's just condensed and vibrating in place at a very slow rate versus a very high rate, which would cause it to stop being physical. If we look at the structure even of liquid compared to solid, it has, you know, the, the atoms moving even more quickly, which giving it this more flow-based kind of pattern, where if you look at gaseous states, it's even more quickly. And if you look at energy, it's even quicker as we kind of go up the scale with that. And so when you get to, when we look at the law of polarity, for example, when you look at actually energy and matter, they're two of the same thing, just at different degrees, different ends of the pole. Energy at the highest level is just instantaneous, fast moving to the point where you can't see it but at the lowest gross level, it's matter, but it is simply still energy that is moving, it's vibrating, but it's just condensed so that we can perceive it in physical reality. And so there is no out there, out there. And one thing that may blow you away, and you can look this up, this is a scientific fact, is that 99.999999% of reality, of everything, is empty space and energy and 0.000001%, which is the remaining percent, is physical matter. And so most people are focusing on the thing that is that tiny, tiny percentage that is like statistically negligible because it's so small. Most people are trying to influence that to change their lives. Instead of tapping into the thing, which is where energy, frequency, and vibration, it, where that is, instead of tapping into that, which is the 99.6 more nines percent of reality. And do you think once you learn how to tap into that 99 plus percent, do you think when you learn how to tap into that, you'll be able to shape your reality? You'll be able to influence reality in amazing ways? Of course you can. And so most of reality is energy, frequency, vibration, and a tiny fraction of reality is matter. Now, obviously, contextually, relatively speaking, that seems massive to us. That doesn't mean that physical reality isn't um, important. It doesn't mean that it's not, from our perspective, massive. And, and for some people, it's all they know because they get stuck in their five senses, get stuck in their head, and don't move beyond that. But it's just to show you that in the grand scheme of things, it is a tiny part of it. But also in the grand scheme of things, the totality of everything is practically infinite, um, is, is so large that you couldn't even conceive it. And so that's why physical reality, despite being that tiny fraction of a percentage, um, still appears so large to us. But understand that it is something that has been influenced by the 99.69% or six more nines percent um, of reality, which is energy, frequency, and vibration. And physical matter is simply a byproduct of what you're doing with that 99 plus percent. And so most people are trying to change their lives by being particle influencing particle or by being physical, trying to influence physical. Now, again, I'm not saying you will not take physical action. It's an important part of the process, but what action you take, the energy you're in when you take it, why you're taking it is so crucial. You can't just take blind action and expect to get to where you want to go. You know, that's like trying to steer the car with your eyes closed, right? Not having any idea where you're going or there's eight roads you could take and you're just like, I'm just gonna go down this one for no reason because I know I gotta take action. I gotta be in the physical, but more likely than not, that's gonna take you further away from where you want to go. So let's talk a little more about energy, frequency, and vibration, why it's so important to us. And I'm gonna start with a question. Do you know what the most powerful transmitter and receiver um, is on the planet? Now, if you said the human brain, you get a gold star. The human brain, the brain that is within your head right now is the most powerful transmitter and receiver on the planet as in the human brain in general, which means you have been gifted, you have been blessed with this incredible organic machine that allows you to transmit out certain things and also receive certain things back. Now, what is it that you're transmitting out from your brain and you're doing this 24 seven and what is it that you're receiving back? Energy, frequency, 
and vibration. You are transmitting out 24 seven. There's no exception to this. You can't turn it on and off. As long as you have a working brain and you're alive physically, your brain is transmitting out energy frequency vibration. It is resonating with other things of a similar vibration, of a similar frequency, or it's on the same frequency, of a similar energy, and that which it is resonating with will come back into your life. And so why is this so crucial to understand? Because what are you transmitting out? This is the 99.999999% of reality. What are you transmitting out? What energy are you sending out to the field? to the core of the universe, to God, whatever you want to call it. What energy are you sending, transmitting out? Now, let me get even more specific because you might go, well, okay, energy, I'm sending energy out. I'm, I'm sending out a frequency, a vibration, but what does that mean? Let's make that more tangible. What Practically, what does that mean? So let's make it very, very simple. What you are transmitting out is feeling. And I'll explain what I mean. You are transmitting out feeling, emotion. What's another way of looking at emotion? energy in motion. Energy like we're talking about. Vibration is always in motion. Energy in motion. You are sending out that frequency. And so this is why when you hear um, talks from amazing masters, like we could look at Neville Goddard, like how the feeling is the secret, how you want to assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled. Why does he give that advice of assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled? I just feel it into existence. That doesn't make any sense. This is why, because your brain is a massive transmitter receiver, insanely powerful and gets more powerful the more you practice this and the better you get at it because you're able to more powerfully send out transmissions that, you know, we can get call it God. We can call it, you know, the core of the universe, the field, the quantum field, whatever word, you know, tickles your fancy, will then send back a transmission to your brain that you pick up and then we'll go into what you can do from there. But why do we assume that feeling? Because when you assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled and you're sending out that vibration, you will start bringing things back that resonate with that vibration. So this will be ideas, inspiration. Universe will also start to move certain things in your life that more resonate with that same vibration. And so if you're always assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled, it means you're going to be receiving back the inspiration on how to make that a physical reality. Or you're going to be receiving back people who are going to help you on the journey who are also sending out similar transmissions. Or you're going to receive back events that start coming into your reality that are at a similar resonance because of a similar transmission. In the same way, if you tune to a radio station and you're on rock and roll, what kind of songs are you going to get? Are you going to get some jazz? Are you going to get some uh, country? No, you're gonna get rock and roll. But ultimately, you will be getting rock and roll. You'll be getting whatever station you are tuned into and therefore sending out that transmission. So if you're sending out good feelings, you're sending out things like love and joy and abundance, that's what you'll receive back. But in the same way, if you send out fear and apathy and guilt, you'll receive that back. Tesla himself is even quoted as saying, my brain is only a receiver. In the universe, there is a core from which we obtain knowledge, strength, and inspiration. And I've not penetrated into the secrets of this core, but I know that it exists. And so Tesla, again, one of the most brilliant minds of the last century, along with other ancient masters and people who just understand how reality works, they understood or understand that our brains are transmitters and receivers, that we are gathering information, knowledge, wisdom, and other things from some core in the universe, from God. You know, we can, we can call it divine inspiration. That's where God lives, right? Um, it, it can be the field. It can be, you know, again, these are just synonymous things. We can go to the Kabbalion and call it the all, right? But it is this thing we are tuning into and then receiving things from that, uh, we can call it radio station, from that um, thing that we are resonating with.
And this is why so many of the ancient masters were master manifestors. This is why Tesla was able to invent in the way that he invented. If you think he was working everything out like from a logical standpoint and tinkering and just trial and error, that's not typically how he went about his inventions. He constructed it in his mind's eye first through the inspiration he found coming through from this, as he calls it, the core of the universe. We can call it God, we can call it whatever, but he was using that because he was tuned in, understanding his brain as a transmitter and receiver, receiving that information, creating it in his mind eye, using that information, and then physicalizing it, bringing it into manifestation in the physical world. And he is responsible for some of the most amazing technologies that we still use today, and probably even more that have been suppressed and we haven't learned about because certain people don't want us to learn about it because who knows what, you know, amazing benefits would come from those things or freedoms would come from those things. But this is something that Tesla did. It's something that ancient civilizations that were advanced did. And it's something you can do as well. Now, this is why if you know someone who is constantly in the emotion of fear or anger, or we can just say lower levels of consciousness. So what I'll do is I'll have a hawking scale come up just to give you an idea. And we're going to go over this a little bit more in a second. But if you're on the lower end of this and you vibrate out and transmit out from your brain, these feelings more often, so the lower ones, that's why when you look at people doing that, their lives seem like a disaster. They're always falling apart. There's always things to be victimized about, etc etc. Whereas if you have someone who is resonating at the higher emotions that have more energy behind them, more power behind them, that are, you know, more like joy and peace, willingness and acceptance, love, if you look at their life, it's completely different, usually abundant, usually they're incredibly happy, usually so many good things are happening for them. And that's because they are more often than not transmitting out those things, which they are then receiving back and then actionizing those, whereas people lower on the scale are sending out those things and receiving kind of more reasons to feel that way. Uh, usually don't take much action at all. These things inspire them to do nothing, essentially inspire them to keep beating themselves up, but it's simply because they're sending out this signal that then is being received back. Now you might be thinking that or, or had the thought come across your mind that I thought that it was our thoughts that determined what we get in our life. I thought that thoughts are things and all these things that we learn. Thoughts are an incredibly important part of the process but maybe not for the reasons that you think. Thoughts are powerful because when you think certain thoughts they usually elicit a certain feeling. You can visualize all day, for example, about the thing that you want or dream life or whatever, but if you don't feel an excited emotion or an elevated emotion while thinking it, you're not really moving anything forward. Thoughts are useful tools because they help us elicit a certain feeling. If you have thoughts and they're not eliciting a feeling, they're not doing anything for you. You can think about it. There are certain thoughts you probably have that elicit negative feelings and then transmit that out. And the reason we want to use thoughts to our benefit and be very intentional about them, because there are also certain thoughts that when we think them, we feel really good. So we want to be engaging with those thoughts. And usually what I like to think about is either neutralizing thoughts, so example for ones that would have made us feel pretty crappy in the past, to neutralize them so that they have no effect, or to neutralize them and then think differently, to think about things you know that actually are going to send out a good feeling, a good transmission that you actually want to send out. It's like the famous quote, you know, you have to focus on what you want, not what you don't want. Most people get what they don't want because they focus on what they don't want. Instead of focusing on what they want, they focus on the lack of having what they want. It's like, okay, you know what, um, I want to, you know, I don't want to be in debt anymore right? I want to, I don't want to be poor anymore. But what you're really doing is you're focusing on what you don't want, which gives you more of the thing. Instead of saying, I want to be abundant, you know, I'm going to send out feelings of abundance now. You know what? I am abundant. I'm going to find all the things in my life that are evidence of my abundance. You know what? I have my health. You know what? I have, there's a, a beautiful nature out there. You know what? I'm, you know, I just took another breath. I have an abundance of breath. And the more you connect with that and send out that signal, the more of its like kind will start to come back. And so that's why thoughts are important. But understand it is not the thought alone that is benefiting you. The thought elicits a feeling, an emotion, and it's that energy that's being transmitted out that's crucial.
And so before moving on to the next part, I just want to ask the question, what energy, what frequency, what vibration are you transmitting out most often? Because understand, and a lot of people get this confused uh, because I'll, I'll talk to people and be like, well, I've been meditating. I've been thinking a little bit better, all this different stuff. And that's great, you know, to allow yourself to start thinking a little bit better. But what are you doing most of the time? It's not about visiting good emotions, positive emotions, or feeling that way. It's about where are you living versus where are you visiting? You see, most people are visiting emotions like joy, peace, and gratitude. And you'll naturally always do that at some point because you need contrast. And then they're living in emotions like fear, or they're living in emotions like guilt and shame, or living in emotions like pride, anger, apathy. And so the goal, and this takes some work, you know, it took me um, many years to get to this point. I, you know, many mentors and programs and so many things, but I'm so glad I did that all because when you get to a point when you're living more from joy and gratitude, where you can snap into it like that, or if you fall off the horse a little bit, you can just get right back on. It's a magical, magical thing that starts to shift everything for you because now you're transmitting that out most of the time. Remember, this is on 24-7. You are transmitting and receiving 24-7 and there's no exception to this. You cannot turn it off. If it's off, it probably means you're dead. So <laughs> you want it on. So I wanna dive a little more deeply into this to give you a better idea of how this works. And the model that I absolutely love is the Hawking scale. And this is by David Hawkins, who was essentially the expert on consciousness. He had an amazing body of work. Um, he gives a lot of it in his book, Power Versus Force, an insanely incredible book that if it resonates with you, I can't recommend enough. I've read it so many times now and use this chart all the time uh, with clients, with myself, you know, it, it just, it's a, it's a magical, magical thing. And so Power Versus Force is a book that goes over different levels of consciousness, their corresponding emotions, so the emotion that aligns to that level of consciousness, you know, how that shows up, what that looks like, and how to essentially move up this scale. Now, what's really cool about the scale, you can see that there's like shame and guilt at the bottom, then we go all the way up to enlightenment, is this is a logarithmic scale, which means from let's say uh, 200 on the scale to 201 is a 10x different difference, right? Um, or something along the lines. Essentially, each even single level up, so 192 to 193, is a massive boost in power. And you can actually climb this scale very quickly when you are really committed to it, you're really intentional, and you're learning this stuff. And so what's amazing about this scale is it shows you kind of the emotions that if you're in most of the time, where you are on this scale, and there's another thing called cymatics that'll kind of show what happens when you're resonating at this level. Now, ultimately on this scale, when you're on the lower levels, Hawking's calls this being in a place of what's called force. When you're in the higher levels, you're in a place called power. Uh, that's just how he classifies it. Now, when you're in a place called force when you're in these lower levels. And so this is about 199 below. So pride and below, you're in the forceful states. This is when you're forcing against life. This is when things are breaking down. Essentially, if you remain in these states for an extended period of time, things begin to break down. You get high entropy, which is breakdown. This is essentially um, states that will not serve you and just lead to problems. They're causing you to transmit things that are bringing back things like stress, like struggle, you know, guilt, shame, um, et cetera. And it's not the place on the scale that you want to be. These are the forceful states. Now above 200 and above, which is courage, which makes complete sense, that that's the gateway to the higher levels of consciousness. Once you're in courage and higher, you're starting to move towards power. Now power gives you so much more energy to play with. Power gives you so much more kind of life building energy. It's creative. It has low entropy, which means very little breakdown. The higher you go on the scale, this is when things like healing occurs, uh, when things like just quicker manifestations occur. And the higher you are on this level, essentially the more powerful the vibration frequency and energy you're transmitting out essentially the higher we start vibrating on this scale the higher we are on the scale and remember the higher we live on this scale not just visit but the higher we live the more good that comes into our life and this is actually one of the main things um, that we do in our six-month transformation program that we take clients through who just get 
phenomenal results because we show them exactly how to move up this scale. We give them the best tools, insights, and awarenesses in all areas of life, wealth, um, relationships, mastering emotions, you know, legacy, and like what you want to do for your vocation, all these different things. We help them to get to what we call through me or these power levels of consciousness and not just visit. There's a reason it's six months long, but we get them to live there permanently. And when you live permanently at these higher levels of consciousness, your life starts to just become magical. Your re reality creation abilities go through the roof. You know, what you attract in were things that even maybe right now you would have not even thought possible, but we help people open up those possibilities get to this level, which it's not, not everyone knows how to do. Most people don't. It's not the easiest thing to do, but we give them the roadmap to get there, hold their hand, coach them every single week to get there. And we show them again, the quickest way to do it, the best methods and things that actually make it stick. What are you transmitting out most of the time? And most people don't know how to get to that point. So that's why we show people how to do it. Now, if you are interested in learning more about that, I actually have a free training that you can get down below. This free training is gonna tell you more about the program, but also give you some more tools and insights that you can use right now. And you can also take a look at some of the other um, results that people have gotten from that program. If that's something that resonates with you and you want to, you're like really committed, like I wanna get this down, I wanna start manifesting my dreams, I wanna start being a masterful reality creator, you can go check that out down below. Now, one other thing I wanna give you is something that's called cymatics. And this was by Hans Jenny, where he did an experiment, um, basically pumping certain levels of frequency and vibration into different things like sand and other things of that nature. And it created certain coherent patterns depending on the frequency. And what he found in this study, and you can actually, I think, look up videos of demonstrations of this. If I can find it, I'll put up some clips. What he found is when you pump in a certain frequency into this matter using sound and other means, uh, I believe it was mainly sound, that it starts to form a certain pattern. And the higher consciousness level, we can look at Hawking's chart, that you pumped into it, the more coherent, the more beautiful the patterns became. And why this is significant is because if you do the same in your life, you transmit out higher levels of frequency, the more coherent and beautiful your life becomes. Essentially, your life beautifies. It becomes orderly and coherent and beautiful. It becomes more complex, but coherently complex. And more complexity means more manifestations, but in a coherent way, not in this chaotic, massive mess way, you're becoming more coherent, which leads to more coherent things coming in, things at a higher level. You're suddenly ready for these things to come in. So it's a great study to take a look at that kind of demonstrates this. And there's also one more uh, that you can look at that's one of my favorites, and this is Dr. Iyamoto's uh, water crystal experiment. Now, Dr. Iyamoto's water crystal experiments are really amazing because it shows what happens when you calibrate something to a certain frequency, to a certain vibration, to a certain energy. And what happens is reality at the atomic level at the, the structural level starts to change and it starts to change very quickly. So the experiment they essentially did is they started to speak certain words that came with a certain energetic imprint or even play music or things that were calibrated to different levels of energy and they started to expose water to it. And then what they would do is while that water was being exposed to this energy, so it was being influenced by this energy, they would freeze it and then look at it under a microscope. And I'll put some images up of what the different patterns were. And what they discovered is when they really started tuning in more high conscious energies into the water, the patterns and crystals they formed were insanely beautiful and coherent. Where when they tuned the water to what's called lower levels of consciousness, so anger and hatred and like kind of insults and these kinds of things, the pattern was insanely chaotic. Now, why is this significant to know? Because water is one of those things that actually makes up about 70 to 80% of our body. And so it really shows that how reality can be influenced at that smaller level. And this is not just happening at the water level, it's happening at the molecular, the atomic level within the water. And it's happening very, very quickly. And this goes to show the energy that something is influenced by, the energy that something is in, will determine kind of how coherent it is, how beautiful it is, you know, how much, you know, how much more powerful that it is. And so what are you transmitting out? What are you allowing yourself to be influenced by is starting to shape you or is shaping you in similar ways.
Now, one thing I want to give you is if you want to use Dr. Iyamoto's experiment in your own life to benefit your life, they actually have something called a flasca. And this is something that I have right here. And this is an incredible little thing that is actually, um, they work with Dr. Iyamoto's lab to create a glass that restructures the water to the crystals that you saw me put up on screen. Essentially, you will be drinking a live structured water and 70 to 80% of your body is made up of that water and you'll be making sure that you consume high energy, kind of high frequency water. So that's a really amazing tool that you can use. I will link it down below. This is something I use personally. I've bought it for like my whole family. My girlfriend has one as well because it's just such an amazing tool that where you just put water in it, you wait five minutes and it will restructure the water. And especially in this day and age with how poor some of the water quality is, this is an amazing tool to have. If you're interested, I will link that down below if you would like to get one. Another thing that I want to give you that is going to be so powerful because now that you have this information, you may be wondering, how do I manifest this? How do I do this? Well, I actually have a full manifestation formula. And this is a formula that secret societies, those in the know, those who understand how reality work have used for so long, for centuries, possibly even thousands of years that absolutely works. If you use what you've learned in this video in combination with this, you're gonna start seeing things happen very, very quickly.